day 2P and welcome to your next lesson. We're working on word problems today and our goal, I can solve and interpret word problems involving systems of equations, both using algebra and using graphing software. So for example number one, we're going to go through this and then I'm going to show you how to graph it on some software uh, that you can, it's just internet software, you can get it on any web browser or you can use them on the iPads at school. So we're going to go through example number one and solve it with algebra and then I'll show you how to do it um, on this graphing software. So example number one, the Relaxacab Taxi Company charges $2.50 per call plus $0.75, or 75 cents per kilometer. The Drive Away Today Taxi Company charges $1.25 plus $0.95 cents per kilometer. Create a system of equations to compare the cost of each company. Use C for cost and D for kilometers driven. Okay, so let's do that to start with. Um, for the Relaxacab Company, the cost is, uh, well, it says charges are charges $2.50 per call and then $0.75 cents per kilometer. So we start at $2.50 and then for every kilometer we drive we add $0.75. Cents. Now I need a multiplier with that $0.75 cents because we don't know how many kilometers we're driving. We want it to count for everything and it told me to use D for number of kilometers driven. So if I drive one kilometer I'm going to just add $0.75. Cents. If I drive 10 kilometers, I have to multiply that by 10, which would be $7.50, and that's what I would add on. Now, for the Drive Away Today DAP company, the cost is $1.25 plus 95 cents per kilometer driven. So there's my two equations, and we need to solve them. And it asks us to solve them. In Part B, it says solve the system by substitution. So I'm going to solve it by substitution. I'm going to call this one equation 1 and this one equation 2. Now what I'm going to do is take this. This tells me that C is $1.25 plus 90.95D. So I'm going to put it in for that C in equation one. So I'm going to say sub two in one. And when I do that, I get 1.25 plus 0.95D equals $2.50 plus 0.75D. And now I have to solve. So I'm going to make this the home of the variable, and I'm going to leave that there, which means I have to subtract $1.25 from both sides. And I end up with leaving the 0.95D here. And this becomes $1.25 when I actually make that subtraction. And then I have 0.75D. Now on this side of the equation, I'm going to make that the home of the constant, which means I have to get rid of the variable. So I'll subtract 0.75D, and on this side I have to subtract 0.75D. So when I make that subtraction, I get 0.2D, and on the other side I have $1.25. And lastly, I divide both sides by 0.2. And what this tells me is that D equals 6.25. And remember that 6.25 is kilometers because it says it's D. And now I have to figure out what the cost is for 6.25 kilometers. To figure out the cost for 6.25 kilometers, I take my D and I say sub D back into, we're going to put it in equation 1. So that says C equals 2.50 uh, zero plus 0 0.75 times the number of kilometers, 6.25. And that gives me 6.25 plus 0.75 times uh, 6.25. Uh, it gives me $7.18. When I round it. Okay, so what does that actually mean as far as the question's concerned? That means that 
these two companies, if I drive 6.25 kilometers, the cost will be $7.18 no matter which company I pick. So let's take a look at the graph and I'll show you how to get this on Desmos, but we'll just have a quick look at the graph that I graphed earlier. Um, here's the, the intersection point and that's where the cost is the same. And the kilometers are the same. So if I were going 6.25 kilometers, it doesn't matter which taxi cab company I, I choose, um, it's going to cost me the same amount of money. Now, this one, the one that has the lower starting point, and that's the drive away company. So the drive away today has a lower starting point, and the relax a cab uh, climbs. Um, much more shallower slope. So that means that if I'm going a short distance, less than 6.25 kilometers, I should choose um, drive away today. If I'm going more than 6.25 kilometers, then the red line is less money, so I should choose the relax a cap. And I'll just show you how to punch this into Desmos. Desmos is an online graphing calculator. And you can just go to, just search Desmos Graphing Calculator. And notice I've already put it in, and I use C's and N's. I don't have to change the variables. I just put it in exactly as it said. And here's my answer, 6.25 and $7.19, okay. which is what we got before. So, and you can move it around and look at it. You can click off of it. So it doesn't give you that point, but if you just want that intersection point, you just click on it and it tells you where they cross. So that's pretty, um, a lot easier than some of the other graphing software you could use. Okay. So now we're going to do this one. A sales clerk is counting money. At the end of the day, he has a total of 73 bills and 10s and 20s. The total value of the money is $1,150 and the equations to represent the situation are as follows. So we get the total number of bills. So we get some 10s and some 20s and we add up how many of them we got and we got 73. And then we add up the value of them. So I take the number of bills I have and I multiply it by its value. That must mean that the x is our number of 10s. And I take the number of bills I have and I multiply it by the value of each bill. Um, and if you think about it, if you've got five $10 bills, that's worth $50. You had to multiply that by the 10 to get the value of your five $10 bills. So that means that X, and this is what it's asking here, what does each variable represent and how do you know? Uh, X is the number of $10 bills. And the reason we know that is because of the times 10 multiplier for value. And the Y must be the $20 bill uh, because of the times 20 multiplier, et cetera, et cetera, for value. Solve both by hand using algebra and the graphing calculator or graphing software. So I get x plus y equals 73 is my first equation. And then 10x plus y, 20y, equals 11.50 is my equation number two. So I want, to, I'm going to do this one by elimination, which means I need to get the same number either in front of the x's or in front of the y's. And if I multiply my x by 10, I can get the same number in front of the x's. So I'm going to take, and if I multiply the first equation by 20, I'll get the same number in front of y's, but I'm going to take the smaller one. So I'm going to say equation 1 times 10, and then I'm going to multiply everything in equation 1 on both sides of the equation by 10. So I get 10x plus 10y equals 730. And that's my equation 3. Now you'll notice in equation um, 2 and 3, our x's are lined up. I have the same values of x in equation 2 and 3. 
So to get rid of them, since they have the same sign, I'm going to subtract. I take equation 2 and subtract equation 3. And when I take equation 2 and subtract equation 3, the x's go away because 10x minus 10x is 0, and 20y minus 10y is 10y, and 1150 minus 735. 735, just by 730. 730, 1150 minus 730 is 420. And now I have to divide both sides by 10 to get y equals 42. So there's my answer. And now... I have to figure out what my x's are, so I'm going to take that 42 and sub it into equation 1. So I'm going to say sub y in equation 1, and then that's x plus y, but I know y is 42, so I'm going to write 42, equals 73. And now I subtract 42 from both sides, so subtract 42, subtract 42, and the answer is x equals 31. So that means we have 31, and remember X was $10 bills, and 42, $20 bills. And so now let's have a look at, uh, at Desmos and see what it tells us. So if I pull it up in Desmos, and there I just type them in, and I can't see them, so I have to look for them. So I can pull this down, oh, there I have them, and then so I can see the axis, I'm going to zoom out, and I can't see the bottom axis, so I zoom out a little bit again, and there we go. Um, so let's see, did we get the right answer? 31 and 42, so we had x was 31 and y was 42, and that's what we got, 31 and 42. Okay. Now, if I want to do a really rough sketch of that, I just look at what I have for Desmos, and all we need is a rough sketch. If I ask you for a rough sketch off of software, we have one line here and another line like that, and they crossed at uh, 31, 42. So you just do a rough sketch of the graph. And so that's that for that question. Next. Brendan is offered two salary plans at his new job. Plan A is $850 per week plus 4% commission on sales. Or Plan B is $800 per week plus 6% commission on sales. The following equations represent the two salary plans. So you can take a look at the first one. We've got the $850 to start with. And then this is 4% of the sales. That's how we put it. And $800 to start with and 6% of the sales. So what does each variable represent? Well, P is total pay. And S is sales, how much it sells. And how do we know that? Well, we know that because he gets 4% of the sales, so that has to multiply the S. And we know it's the sales because it multiplies by commission percent. Solve the equations by hand. You may check your answer with the graphing software. What does your solution represent? So we're going to solve these by hand. So this is P equals 850 plus 0.04s, and P equals 800 plus 0.06s. And I'm going to solve by elimination. I'm going to tell you why I'm going to solve by elimination. Um, the P's already have the same number in front of them. And so they're going to be very easy to get rid of. If I take equation 1 and I subtract equation 2, so I do equation 1, subtract equation 2, P minus P means my P's are going to go away. So the P's become 0. P minus P is 0. 850 minus 800 is 50. And then 0 0.04 minus 0 0.06 is negative 0.02s. And 
that is my new equation that I can now solve for s because I no longer have a p. So I'm going to make this one my home of the constants and get rid of the variable by adding 0.02s on this side. And if I do that to that side, I have to add it to the other side. So this side becomes 0.02s, it's not a 5, it is an s, equals 50. And now when I multiply, when I divide both sides by 0.02, I get S is equal to $2,500. And if I want the next one, I'm going to say sub uh, S in, uh, let's take equation one, so we can figure out what P is. P equals 850 plus 0.04S. But I know what the S is. It's the 2,500, so I replace that S with 2,500. And then I can just punch that into my calculator. I get 850 plus 0.04 times 2,500. And that gives me $950. So what this actually means is that the pay for both plans is $950 if we sell $2,500 worth of goods. And I'll just do that, show that quickly to you on the Desmos graphing software. We're going to pull it up on the graphing software like that. And again, we can't see it. I don't know where it is, but I've typed the stuff in exactly as it was. And now I can just, I can zoom out until I can actually see something. Oh, I'm zooming way out, zooming way out. Where are my lines? Where, oh, there they are. Okay. Now remember, I need to see the intersection point, so it's somewhere in there. Um, so there it is. Twenty-five hundred and ninety-five, and that's what we got. Okay. So this graphing software is really easy to use. You just click around it. You zoom in and you zoom out over here, and we got the same answer as we did um, by hand. So what does that actually mean? Well, if we take a look at what we had before, I'm going to do a rough sketch of that graph. Um, so one of them went like this, and the other one went like this, and they met at um, $2,500 in sales and $950 pay. So that means that the one with the lower initial value, which is this $850, $800 actually climbs faster. So if you are going to sell a lot of stuff, you're going to get more money with this one that started out smaller. So take a look at C. It says, suppose this was a test by Brendan's new employer. If Brendan picks the wrong plan, the employer withdraws his offer of employment. Which position do you think Brendan should pick? Well, if Brendan was going to be lazy, he would probably want one that starts with this higher initial value because he doesn't have to sell as much to begin with to get more money because in the first place that's making more money. But if Brendan is ambitious and he wants to work really hard and get more money, he should pick this plan that starts off slower and then ends up climbing a whole lot faster. So which do you think the employer would like? Would the employer like an ambitious Brennan who's going to sell a lot and make a whole lot more money in the long run? Or do you think he's going to want a lazy Brennan who picks the higher initial value to, so that he knows he's not going to sell too much? So he wants the one that's going to pay a lot right off the bat. I think he's going to want the ambitious Brennan. And that's the end of it for today.